Welcome to our next lesson in our Factors and Products unit for our Grade 10 Pre-Cal Math. Uh, today we're going to look at perfect squares, perfect cubes, and their roots. So let's make sure we understand what we're talking about when we talk about perfect squares and perfect cubes. Perfect square, of course, is any number that can be represented as the area of a perfect square. So can I take that number, change it into a square, multiplication essentially, and say 5 times 5. 25. So 25 is my perfect square. It literally means can I break it up into a square where the sides are the same length. Any number that can be expressed as a small number times itself. That's what we think about in math terms. 5 times 5 is 25. So our example here is 256. What two numbers multiplied by themselves equal 256? Well, it's 16 times 16. Now if we look at a perfect cube, we got to think of three dimensions. Any number that can be expressed as the volume of a perfect cube. So again, volume of a cube, three-dimensional cube, where all the sides are the same. 5, 5, and 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. More traditionally, we think of it as any number that can be expressed as a small number times itself three times. So our example here is 2,197, 13 times 13 times 13. Now these are two fairly easy ideas if you're using a calculator. So for this lesson, we are going to say that no calculators are allowed. We're going to try to do this without the typical calculator. So let's take a look at some terms here. We've got 2,744 to a cubed root. And we know it's a cube root because the 3 is above our uh, root sign. We could have a square root, a cube root, fourth, fifth, sixth root, whatever number we're dealing with as the root appears above the sign. There are three terms we have to use. First one is the radical. In this case, the radical is the entire thing. So the radical is the 2744 to the cubed root. The entire idea is what we call a radical. In that radical, we've got two ideas, the index and the radicand. The index is the small number outside the root sign. So in this case, it's a 3. And the radicand is the number underneath. So it's 2,744. Now if you happen to be using a calculator, there's a few buttons that you need to be familiar with. First we're going to talk about squaring and cubing. On a calculator, your squared button usually is X with a little 2 above it. Now each calculator is slightly different. You might see Y to the 2, you might see A to the 2, it just varies on the calculator you use, but basically you're looking for a squared button meaning X2 x times x. Now the opposite of squaring is a square root and most of the time you'll see the square root sign like this. Blank and blank on a calculator. This means whatever number I type in I'll be taking the square root of it. Now how do we use our calculator for going beyond squared to cubed to the power of 4? Well now we have to look for special buttons and again every calculator is slightly different. Usually when you want to look for is y to the x, where the y is the base number, x is the exponent. Now if we're looking for the uh, root of that, most calculators will have x as the index, the root sign, and a y as the radicand. Now again, these vary slightly depending on the calculator you have. Let's take a quick little look here. I'm going to bring up Desmos here. So this is a calculator you would see off the website of desmos.com. So here we have our standard buttons that we'd like to push. And on the right hand side is where we have all of our products. So let's take a quick look here as to how we do square roots and cube roots. Now here is my square button. I did say that usually it is y to the x, but uh, in this one it's a2. So let's say I want to say 5 squared. 
I type in the number 5, and then I hit the A squared button. It does the work for me. 5 squared is 25. No problem. What about the root sign? Let's go 25. Now our root sign is slightly different on Desmos. It looks like a check mark. And I click it. Oh, nothing happened. You see that the 25 stayed outside of my root sign. So I do have to understand how to use my calculator. So in this case, I'd have to hit the root sign first, and then 25. And when I do that, my equal sign comes in. So squaring and square rooting, you have to realize how to punch information in. Now if we want to go higher than the power of 2, maybe 3, 4, or 5, we're going to have to use on Desmos, it's A to the B, or the check mark with the N sign. And how we punch this in is rather important. So let's take a look. We'll clear all. Let's go 2, and then we'll raise it to the power of 3. So 2 times 2 times 2 should give me 8, and that's what Desmos gives me. So when I'm using the squaring button, the exponent button, I type the base in first, and then the exponent. When we're doing the cubed root, we have to hit this button first, and look what comes in our display. We've got a cursor, leaving us for our index, and we've got a cursor, a blank space, to put our radicand. So let's do the same thing. Our index was 3, and then we click, and our radicand is going to be 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So when we're using our exponent buttons, we hit the base first, then the button, then the exponent. When we're using our root buttons, we have to hit the button first, and then our index, and then our radicand. So knowing your calculator is rather important. Now I did say calculators were not used, but of course they're great for checks. So let's go how to figure out some of this uh, square rooting using two different methods. The first one we're going to look at is going to be our prime factors. So in this case we have the square root of 576. So the first thing I do is I write out the square root of 576. Now again, prime factors, same idea. We split this up into its prime numbers. We looked at this last lesson. So 576, I'm going to start with my smallest prime, which is 2, and yes, 2 goes in. So I get 2 and 288. 288 is also divisible by 2, so I've got 2 and 144. 144 goes by 2 and 72. 72 can give me 2 and 36. 36 can give me 2 and 18. I'm going to bring this up here. 18 can give me 2 and 9. And of course, 9 can give me 3 and 3. So now I write out all my primes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. So I get 2 times 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. And I've got two threes. Now because I'm looking for the square root, I'm going to take my primes and get them into groups of 2. So I'll pull out my highlighter here. How many groups of 2 do I have? There's 1, 2, 3. There's 3 groups of 2, and 1 group of 3. So I will now rewrite this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And I will multiply it out to give me 24. So the square root of 576 is 24 using prime factors. Now another option we do have is to estimate. So we're looking at the square root of 576. So I like to start off finding out 
what the square root of 576 is in terms of 10, 20, 30, 40, or 60. So I know that the 20 squared would give me 400. And I know that 30 squared would give me 900. So ask yourself, is this closer to 400 or closer to 900? And clearly, this number is closer to, to 400. So I say closer to 20 squared. Now it just becomes a guess and check method. Let's take a shot at, say, this 23 squared. So I try 23 squared. And 23 squared, using my calculator, is 529. Now I'm looking for the square root of 576, so I gotta go a little higher. So let's try one more. Let's try 24 squared. 24 squared, using my calculator, is 576. Exactly what I'm looking for. So my answer is 24. So in the estimating method, I find the 10 base that is closest to the number I'm looking for. And then it's just guess and check. Try 23, try 24, see what we get. Prime factors gives it to me right away. Final answer, 24. Estimating, I may try 1, may try 2, may try 3, but eventually I will get to 24. Now let's flip our page and try doing some cube roots. And again, we have the same two methods prime factors, and estimation. So I'm going to try to find the cube root of 5,832. So I start by writing that out. Cube root of 5,832. Same process. Break this down to prime, starting with the smallest one. I know 2 goes in there, so I get 2 2,916. Even number, so I know 2 is going to go in there. To 1,458. Again, 2 goes 729. And now I don't have an even number, so I know 2 is not going to work. Let's try 3. And yes, 3 does work. 3 and 243. 243 does go in by 3 again, 3 and 81. Now, 81 is a special number, because I know 9 and 9 go into it, so I'm going to go 9 and 9, which allows me to take 3's into 9. And there are my prime factors, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Write this out as a product of my primes, three twos, and six threes. Now because I'm looking for the cubed root, I'm not going to put this in groups of two, but rather groups of three. So there's one, there's one, and there's one. So this becomes 2 times 3 times 3, and 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. So the cube root of 5,832 is 18. Now let's try the estimation method. So again, I write out my cube root, 5,832 to the cube root. And again, let's try those base tens. 10 cubed, I know is 1,000. And 20 cubed, I know is 8,000. So are we closer to 10 cubed or 20 cubed? Well, clearly it's closer to 20 cubed. Closer to 20 cubed. So let's take a guess here. Let's try 17. 17 cubed, using my calculator, is 4,913. 
So we are a little slow, a little less, so let's try a number higher. Let's try 18 cubed. And use my calculator, the answer of 5,832 comes together. So I know the answer is 18. Again, same two ways, whether it's squaring or cubing or the power of 4, power of 5, same idea. Prime factors, get into groups of 2s, 3s, or 4s, or 5s, whatever you need, get your answer. Estimating, find those 10s. Which one is it closer to? Guess and check. So now we can go into our textbook. We can work on page 146. We can try 2 from the A's, 4 from the B's, and 2 from the C's.